Hello and welcome to UC Today. My name is David Dungay. Today I'm joined by Tom Morgan from Modality. Tom, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hi, David. Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Thank you. Excellent. So today we're going to be talking about a new service from Microsoft, one of the big launches from the Ignite event at the end of last year. Um, before we get into that, let's uh, let's have a bit of an introduction. Uh, Tom, tell us a little bit about yourself, your position and what you do within Modality. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So uh, I'm a product innovation architect um, at Modality Systems, which is an odd job title. I'm a developer by trade. That's where I've come from. But I spend quite a lot of time now thinking about um, making sure we're building the right thing. So I work closely with our development teams to make sure that the work they're taking on is the right work for the business. Spend time with our product owners, talking to customers, understanding the market, trying to predict where we're going to be, um, and then making sure our development teams um, can meet those challenges. Brilliant. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about a new service from Microsoft, ACS. That's Azure Communication Services. Um, where, where should we start? Let's 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 start at the beginning. You know, let, let's talk about what this new initiative is. Uh, what does it mean? And uh, you know, how maybe companies can use it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it was really interesting to see this announced at the back end of last year because it kind of fills a gap in what Microsoft Azure is for for developers and building out. Uh, applications, especially these kind of communication based applications. Fundamentally, it's a platform for developers who want to add in communication workloads into their applications. That might be sending SMSs, it might be voice over IP, um, but it's a it's a developer tool. It's kind of, it's not really an end user service as such. It's something that developers will take and build into their applications alongside other you know, assets they have in Azure, like, you know, web services or um, like the SignalR services. It's, it's just another one of those as kind of platform as a service from, from Azure. Um, and it's currently in preview. That's probably quite important to point out. Um, so it's good for kicking the tires on and creating and starting to build applications. Um, but it's kind of not ready for, for use in kind of GA world yet. Okay. So, who, I mean, who, who can go and use, use this and have a play while it's in preview hmm. mode at the moment? Yeah, so anyone can do it. It's a public preview. So um, you'll be able to find it in your Azure portal. If you go and search for communication services, you'll be able to add it. Um, when you do that, you get an API key. That's it. Like you go and look at the samples, use your API key, and you can start using it today. Uh, it costs money. It comes out of your Azure credit. Um, so whatever your credit allowance is, like it will come off that. Um, so you pay for voice over IP um, kind of calls. You pay the same amount, whether or not it's audio or video or anything like that. And you pay for SMS um, and PSTN as well. Okay. So in, in terms of in terms of the platform, you know, what what are people getting? What who is this built for exactly? Mm. Yeah. So it's really it's an interesting um, to see this because. Other things like this exist, right? You know, um, most, I guess everybody knows about Twilio as like the way to, to do these kind of things, right? SMS and, and voice over IP more more as well. And, and it's it's very much kind of competing with that, but it's got that Microsoft heritage with the enterprise in mind. So straight out of the box, they're already saying it's HIPAA compliant, it's GDPR compliant. Because it's built on Azure, there's gonna be lots of governance, there's lots of security, lots of um, compliance as well. Um, so it, it should really tick a lot of boxes for enterprises who are looking at the voice over IP space and thinking, you know, how do we how do we do this? How do we get into this, but in a safe way, in a controlled way? But also for enterprise developers who live and work in Azure, this is just another piece of Azure technology they can build into their pipeline. So it's it's quite exciting from that perspective for enterprise developers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in, in, I mean, Microsoft clearly a, a huge brand in IT or in communications. You know, how how important is that? Is that a brand name to this? proposition yeah like it is important because you know microsoft are a respected name in the enterprise in that space for security but it's, it's i guess it's not just it's, it's not just words as well i mean they do spend a lot of money i think it's a billion dollars annually on cyber security research they've got a whole load of security experts they've got more certifications for security than any other cloud provider so you know if you're an enterprise in this space already already using Azure, then this is a natural fit. If you're looking around, looking to go with, it's, you know, it helps tick those boxes as well. Thank okay. sure. you. And um, clearly the, the big headlines, you know, after, over the last 12 months, they've been filled with uh, users on Microsoft Teams. Uh, but there's, there's this, this is not, uh, this is not sort of uh, Microsoft Teams 
uh, application. What, what, what's the what's the synergy between the teams that you all sort of know Microsoft for and uh, the the new service that has come through? Yeah, it sounds a bit confusing, doesn't it? Because like Microsoft releasing another communication platform, they already have one in Teams. What's going on? Um, it, this is different. It's not Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams is a lot more than just calling and messaging. It's a collaboration platform. It's the integration. It's a platform for your applications and all those other things that I tend to talk about quite a lot. This is very different. It's 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 just a platform for make, for developers building those core functionality around WebRTC, real-time chat, SMS, um, inbound, outbound calling into their applications. Interestingly, though, internal like inside Microsoft, it is actually all the same platform. It's the same technology under the hood that powers ACS. It's the same thing that powers Teams. So if you like Teams but and you're looking at ACS and worried about things like core quality or reliability, it's actually the same platform under the hood. Um, we don't see the same parity of... Uh, features necessarily at the moment so i'm thinking like add-on things like um like background blur or um together mode that you see in microsoft teams now we don't necessarily see those things in acs maybe they'll come over time i don't know like but it's interesting to kind of see that actually fundamentally it's, it's the same building blocks Absolutely. Okay, so um, in, in terms of, um, you know, the kind of problems that uh, ACS is going to solve for businesses, you know, integrated communications, a lot of people are looking at this and mm. uh, trying to figure out, you know, how, how does this help uh, me and my business and what I can do for my customers? Uh, you know, is, is this a straight team's replacement? You know, what, what kind of problems is this solving for, for businesses? No, it, it totally isn't because it doesn't replace those things that Teams is very good at, which is both internal collaboration, um, communication, and, and not just voice you know, and calling workloads, but being able to share documents, being able to um, kind of collaborate with applications and all the rest of it, channels, chat, and, and all of that. Teams does that really well. ACS doesn't try and kind of replicate any of that at all. Um, I see ACS being really good for um, kind of B2C workloads where, you know, you, you've got an, a business, but you want to, you've got customers calling into that, like a contact center or something like that. Traditionally, they those customers won't have Microsoft Teams. Um, so you, you wouldn't necessarily expect, you know, an end user to download a Teams app just to kind of go talk to a particular company. That integration, there are ways kind of to do that in, in Teams as well at the moment. Um, but actually, that that's a thing that I see ACS serving really well because uh, it, it makes it, because it's built on that WebRTC platform, it means you can run it in a browser, you can run it, they've got libraries for iOS and Android integration already, um, .SDK already. Um, so that's kind of, um, that's interesting. One other interesting space as well is the contact, like the, the Enterprise Contact Center. Um, so a couple of things here. So Microsoft already said that they're going to integrate with some key Microsoft partners. So 5.9, Genesis, Nice, Incont like um, Tenfold, Vonage, those people. Interesting that a lot of those already have integrations with Microsoft Teams. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see how that plays out. Um, I think it might just be a, like depending on what type of offering you want to offer your customers, depending on how you want that to work, you'll pick one or the other. I think probably over time, we'll see those two things come together as well. So you eventually, like you maybe, I don't know, I'm just guessing, right? But maybe eventually you'll have the benefit to the enterprise of Microsoft Teams, but the convenience for the customer of a WebRTC solution from ACS, something like that. Um, uh, but it's, what's super interesting as well is um, to look at what's happening with Microsoft Dynamics. So Microsoft's own um, customer relation management uh, solution they've got an omni-channel capability um, that's going to include a voice channel meaning that customers can call your contact center and be routed to the right agent that's being built on acs not teams um, so that feels like it's interesting um, mm. because obviously microsoft had free choice of of which road to go down there and they, they chose the acs one so um, yeah it's been interesting to see how that goes um, that, that's i think that's due to be coming this year sometime so yeah absolutely i mean we're, we're seeing these uh inter integrated sort of services hit the hit the market and a number of the big brands um you know in the space which is you know it's gonna be fascinating to see how this this plays out over the next year or, or so mm. uh, so i mean look this is this is still fairly new out of the blocks uh in preview mode still uh some it sounds like there's some major areas where this you know service needs to improve you know what what, are, what where are those sort of maybe deficiencies right now that 
you know, may or may not get addressed in the near future. Yeah, definitely. So it's still in public preview. And right now it's only in the US, meaning that if you create um, an instance of this, it's based out of US region and you can only get US PSTN numbers. Um, that's kind of table stakes is having worldwide support for compliance and security, well, compliance, I guess, but um, but also customers expect a local number as well. Um, I, th I, th I feel like that will probably come at GA, to be honest. Um, I, it, it is still very much just the platform level. So um, if you think it's missing some of the like the management or the experience layer, so if you can't look at current calls in progress or you can't see the quality metrics of historic calls. Now, as a developer, you're obviously you could build all those in, um, but this is, if you imagine like a pyramid of integration where, or like an inverse pyramid, at the moment it's doing the API layer stuff, but it hasn't yet bolted anything on top of that. Um, I think there's a couple of interesting like points that um, I don't think will get addressed, but they're just interesting things to think about. So you pay for ACS using Azure credits. So it's it's an Azure solution that you pay for with that. It's not a like a, an Office 365 solution. So you don't pay for it out of your Microsoft phone system credits, or yeah. you don't get any credit, like a, any advantage from being in a phone system bundle there, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, there's also no direct routing today. Um, I think it's it's supposed to be coming, but right now there's no direct routing support um, or anything like that. Um, and there's no integration with Microsoft Teams at this point. So things like shared presence would be great. Um, so if you've got contact center staff that are using both Teams for internal calls and some ACS-based solution for external calls, that they, they, there's no way of trading presence between them at the moment. Unless, again, unless you implement everything yourself. Um, so yeah, yeah. I, I think there's places like that that will trip people up. Like, But it, yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they get ironed out over time. Well, yeah, I mean that's uh, you know it's partly speculation at this moment. What may or may not may not happen. I mean, is there, is there anything on the roadmap that uh, you know you're you're 100 percent expecting to, to happen over 2021? Yeah, so the, Microsoft have already said they want to integrate ACS with Teams better, um, and, and that's kind of an obvious one for sure. There are some private previews that they have documented. Um, so uh, you can go and see that the, the private preview exists and you can see the calls that you might be able to make, even though you can't actually make them unless you're in the preview. And they focus on being able to join a Teams meeting from ACS. Um, so either um, like sort of by voice or video, uh, having, yeah, having people from ACS join into a Teams meeting. And that's quite interesting. But what's super interesting as well is that looking at some of the code snippets in, the, in that documentation um, is also, it looks like they're building out like a... Uh, something that's a, one step up from that API integration and starting to build together like a module of controls to represent what a Teams call looks like. So as a developer, I don't have to worry about painting on the screen like the video, the vanity feed, the button to hang up, the button to, button to accept, all those things. I can drop on a Teams call module, um, presumably wire it up to the call somehow and then it will work. So that's that's one step up, if you like. Um, it makes it easier for developers. It makes it more accessible. It's less work for everyone. So those kind of things, I think, um, would be interesting to kind of see as well uh, over the course of the year. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, as as I mentioned, you know, we're we're seeing these kind of integrated uh, solutions, you know, hit hit the market more and more, especially right now. Uh, you know, we're, we're living in this, uh, you know, fairly disparate world when it comes to mm. communication. So bringing those all into one sort of workflow you know, totally makes sense, I think. You know, what, what, I mean, what are you, uh, what are you seeing, you know, from the from the wider market? Where does this, where does this fit? You know, what, what, what are you expected to see sort of this year from from the sort of the whole um, market, as it were? Yeah, I don't think we'll see anything that we hadn't predicted, but I think we'll be surprised about how quickly it happens. I think that's that's the takeaway from me for 2020 is the expected things happened way faster than we thought they were going to. So for instance, like people expect more and more from how they interact with companies. Um, you know, why do I get a letter from my insurance company telling me to renew? Why isn't that an SMS? All I really care about is the quote renewal and what it was last year. Press Like I can just fire back an SMS and I'm done, right? Um, yeah. Other things like import, like mortgage, like conversations, so things that I have to go into the bank to do, like definitely like there's been a real switch to trying to move those online, obviously. Um, but I think that will stick and that drives more technology. And the I think people will just vote with their feet. You know, there's a lot of choice in the market and and you have to be good because there's there's lots of other places people can go and and that's that helps that kind of disruptive choice i think really helps um 
I think it's good for enterprises as well having something like ACS here because if you're not if you want to get on this bus but you're not really sure where to start, Microsoft's a pretty safe choice, especially if you're already invested in that ecosystem. Um, and I think the other thing as well is looking specifically at contact centers. I think what's happened in the last kind of 12 months has exposed some issues with how contact centers operate um, in a kind of central building. Everybody goes in one place um, and works there for eight hours. So like that's kind of got people lazy in terms of the software only works on the corporate network. The phones only work inside here. Like they've got to be on the network. They've got, you know, and so I think we'll see a shift to much more distributed contact centers, more flexible ways of working. Again, nothing like groundbreakingly like, you know, sage like from me, I think it's obvious. I just think the speed of it is gonna 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 increase. Um and then also I think AI um so what we're seeing with ACS is like the technology, the the real nuts and bolts of getting people to talk to each other, you know, getting getting the one person for this company to talk to this customer um seamlessly without them needing to go and see each other in person, right? I think that's like the step one. But I think as that gets nailed and we layer on intelligence on top of that, I think we'll see better kind of AI in that space, um, smarter ways for people to get their questions answered, better routing to the right people, um, and, and and just kind of all just trying to get that done better and faster and easier and ultimately cheaper, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, look, um, for, for those people out there who you know maybe trying to wrap their their heads around this this uh, topic, this this subject, um, you know. To, Tom, you you have your own your own blog out there, you know th- thoughtstuff.co.uk. We'll we'll put a link in the in the description for you to go and have a look at. You know you've been having a bit of a play with this technology. Uh, can you tell us about maybe some what, what have you been building? What have you been playing around with um, when it comes to ACS? Yeah, so um, as soon as I heard this announced, it kind of stuck in my brain for a bit, and then with everything that happened last year, I kind of forgot about it for a bit, and then I picked it up again because. Uh, I don't know, about, don't know about you, but like we do a weekly kind of family call with the grandparents and stuff like that. And we've been through a couple of different providers. We've done Teams, we've done Zoom, we've done a couple of others. Um, and not to kind of dump on any one of them, but none of them seem quite right. There's always something, right? And there's always something about them that's not quite right, whether it's trying to get granny to download some apps she's never heard of, or whether it's like compression or like just doesn't deal very well with screaming babies whatever it is and so i kind of got to thinking like it'd be kind of cool if i could do my own one in acs because um you know i'm lucky as a mvp microsoft gives me some um credits on azure every month so it would kind of be cost neutral to me to run this as well so that's interesting um and then some other stuff got announced um as, as well ignite that got me thinking about this so i took the sample that um ACS has so it has a great couple of samples code on GitHub that you can download. So it's got a sample for doing a group room, and then I kind of changed it a little bit to make it more like a family room. So it's kind of the, the when you deploy it and configure it, it's locked to a one group room, but everybody has to put in a password. And you can change the password, so you've got that kind of gate if you like, and then it puts everyone in the in the same place. But you don't need any app or anything like that to run it. You can just do it straight out of a web browser. So I can give that link to my family. Nobody has to download anything. It's kind of secure because of the password. I can change the password whenever I want. Um, and I wrapped it all up using um, Azure Static Web Apps, which is different technology. Um, but it, it just makes it very, very easy to deploy. You don't have to even be a developer. If you're listening to this and you're not a developer, but you like the idea of this, you can kind of take it and run it. And it's kind of a good example because everybody has done this in the last 12 months, yeah. right? Everybody is kind of everybody knows what I mean when I say a family Zoom room, right? Or a family Teams room or like a whatever it is. Um, but actually, the business application for this, there's, there's so many different places you could take it with uh, bringing groups of people together or connecting your customers to the right people. But you're making the customer journey as easy as possible because you're saying to people that you don't need to download an app. You don't need, there's no app plugins. There's nothing to install. It just works in your browser and it's WebRTC. So it works on iOS. It works on Android. It works, you know, wherever you're at. So, um, yeah. It, Folks are welcome to go and take that code and, and play with it. It's all on GitHub. It's all open. Um, I'm mostly building on the work, the really good work, actually, that the ACS team have done with that sample. So, um, so yeah, so congrats, sort of thanks to them as well. It make, makes it look nice and easy to take and do samples like this. Excellent. Well, look, uh, Tom, it's been really great speaking to, to you today and getting that insight into into ACS particularly. Um, look, I think that's a great place to end uh, to today's uh, recording. Um, thank you again uh, for joining me, Tom. No, thank you very much. Thanks.
And thank you for watching. You've been watching UC Today with me, David Dungay. If you've enjoyed what you've uh, seen here today, please give us a like and a, sh and a share on social. We can also follow us on uh, the hashtag UC News. My name's David Dungay. I'll see you next time. Bye.